Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kirsten Olson. I'm the director of the Unruh Institute of Politics. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for being here today. Sorry, we're a couple minutes late. Um, we'll take a few minutes to introduce the panel, and then we'll get going with our conversation. Um, just to begin, I'd like to welcome my co-moderator, moderator, which is uh, to my left here, Sarah Donna Batana. She is the um, news editor at the USC Daily Trojan, and the Daily Trojan is a co-sponsor of our series. You may see this event uh, promoted on the front page uh, pretty much every Wednesday. So join me in welcoming Sarah Donna Batana. I'd like to now introduce our panelists. To my right is Samantha Archie. She's the involvement director for the USC College Democrats. Welcome, Samantha. <laughs> to her right is uh, Mr. Larry Gordon. He serves as the high ed higher education reporter for the LA Times. He covers issues affecting colleges and universities in California and the nation. He is was formerly the assistant city editor of urban affair, or I'm sorry, urban affairs writer at the LA Times, and previously before that worked with New Jersey's Bergen Record and Hudson Dispatch. So join me in welcoming Mr. Gordon. <laughs> to his right is Brian Burley, who's a member of the USC College Republicans. Welcome, Brian. And to his right is Dr. Bill Scroggins, who's currently serving as the president and CEO of Mount San Antonio College, the largest community college in California. He previously served as the superintendent and president of the College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California. And before that, served as vice president of instruction at Modesto Junior College for five years and their interim pres president for two years. Welcome, Dr. Scroggins. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Sarah, who will ask our first question. All right, so I'm going to begin by um, directing the, two, or the question to Mr. Gordon and Ms., or Dr. Scroggins. Um, according to studies released by the LA Times, about half the students enrolled in California community colleges take more than four years to graduate. Among full-time students who entered a community college in 2007, more than 35,000 had not earned their degrees within three years, and most were no longer enrolled in college. Do you think the attraction to free community college tuition would stray students away from completing their four-year degree? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to point out that um, the tuition in, in California community college is by far the lowest in the country, and, and there, are, there, are, there are a lot of opportunities for financial aid. So I actually don't see price uh, as a reason at all. What I do see, as I was saying earlier, is that I see many, many students trapped in uh, remedial classes and that the, the system of being tested in from high school and some people have to take three and four levels of pre-collegiate math and a couple of levels of English which can eat up a, a year or more of your time and they just, a lot of kids just do not pass no matter what, they're kind of trapped on this, this hell of not be able to get out of the pre-collegiate classes. And, discouragement sets in, they drop out, or they just never really, or they take all their other classes and never finish that, and they're stuck. And the, the other important issue I see more than cost is just the inability to get classes. It's easing now, but during the height of the recession a couple of years ago, it was really, really hard to get enough classes to fulfill your load within, within the two years. And students were very, very frustrated, and some were even jumping from community college to community college if they were lucky enough to be in an area like LA where there were many within the same commuting zone that you could pick up a class at LACC and then drive over the hill to Valley. Um. Well, uh, I, I agree with Mr. Gordon, but let me add a, a little to that. Uh, one of the concerns that's been expressed about President Obama's free community college tuition is that students would choose a community college even if they were accepted to a four-year university and the statistics that Sarah quoted are overall for students uh, low completion rates. But what you need to do is compare the completion rates of those who choose to go to a community college even though they were accepted at a university. That happens now for a considerable number of students for a number of reasons, some financial, some family, some local access. Of those students who come pre prepared, that is they were accepted to the university and they go full time, uh, uh, in a transfer major, 
within three years seventy percent of them have completed the requirements for transfer so i don't think the criticism that we're not a good avenue to transfer is a valid criticism of obama's proposal i think it really doesn't work in california mostly for financial reasons community colleges cost only fourteen hundred dollars a year and almost half of students are of particularly those of financial need don't pay anything at all so we've removed financial issues from the equation already um what i was going to say was um one important thing to note is students are already looking at their their community college versus four-year i was at cal state fullerton and students they're aware of how many semesters they have of the cal grant or how many semesters they have of the pell grant they're not afraid to go back already like as i was to try to get into usc and really maximize their eligibility under those grants uh, this would i think this plan could possibly make the problem worse of overcrowding in classes harder harder to get into classes uh, and like he mentioned uh, a lot of the students already have the bog, the bog fee waiver so in california at least it really wouldn't impact a great amount and i, I was mentioning earlier with, with the group up here that um, i'm sure states will have the option to opt out i'm sure california would probably want to maybe use that opt out but uh, i think definitely we should uh, invest in the community community colleges but do it effectively so that going forward um, they're actually pursuing their four-year degrees instead of just getting stuck um, I'm gonna, I, I'll speak on behalf, I'm a um, former community college transfer but not from the state of California. Um, and uh, a lot of the things that they've been saying uh, relative to the state of California's ability to, um, it's easier to transfer to a or your institution from the state of California, from a California community college because the, um, because the uh, guidelines are kind of outlined um, by the state and uh, and are agreed upon by both the state and the um, institute in the institutions um, four year and two year um, this isn't the case in a lot of places around the country I went to school in Maryland um, they have agreements with schools but it's only for certain programs if you want to go outside of that program outside of those programs you're kind of on your own um, and there's a uh, there's not that kind of core set like the UC requirements work a lot for work for a lot of private institutions as well. There's not that kind of core set that work in others in other places. So I think in addition to this community college plan, there needs to be uh, this w within each of the states uh, a kind of curriculum that that is like a state curriculum for their four-year institutions before we start getting kids into community colleges because if they're not prepared to advise them in the way that they need to be advised um, to transfer, then it's not going to be a, um, it's not, I don't think it's a good, good option um, as much as I enjoyed my community college experience. I should have said at the outset that we have a great panel here today. All the students here T today with us transferred to USC so they can um, relate to this issue on a personal level as well as a scholastic level. Can yes? I just add yeah. one thing, just the, the, the stepping away from the details of the financing and Republican versus Democrat, I, I think the thing that, that people um, see in the Obama plan is more just kind of aspirational, to use a wonky word, it, 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 that, that the idea that, um, you know, it, it, even if, um, somebody who's in the sixth grade might have very unclear sense of what college is and how mom and dad are going to pay for it or think just the idea that if they have in their mind that, oh, there is a way for me to enter this kind of scary system for free, you know, if that's there as, as a goal, I mean, if it takes away that fear factor and, and, you know, somehow filters down to middle school that, yeah, you can do this in some way, I mean, I think that in itself has some value for for younger generation that that you know beyond all the details of uh, of what it's going to mean just as sort of you know that, that, that it's a possibility mm -hmm. there's an emotional component yeah. is what you're saying yeah so we'd like to drill, drill down on the economic angle just a little bit and i'd like to begin with mr scroggins the phrasing that president obama used in the state of the union speech last month was Community college should be as free and universal in America as high school is today. 
So a lot of his critics and some of his opponents have criticized this proposal in saying that it doesn't have a lot of details into how it would be financed, would the states finance it, would the federal government subsidize. Um, if we could talk a little bit about how his proposal, whether it, it ends up becoming, fru you know, coming into fruition or not, might affect overall student debt. We had mentioned in our uh, discussion leading here a bit about the fees and some of the other non-tuition related costs of attending. Can we talk a little bit about the, the, his, his plan and how it would affect student debt when they graduate? Well, the, there has been a lot of publicity for the trillion dollar uh, student debt uh, overall in the United States but accumulated over the last few years. Uh, but in the areas that this would affect, uh, which is the uh, public and private accredited uh, universities, that's, that's not as much of a problem, particularly in California. <coughs> the loan debt on average in California is between 20 and $25,000. Uh, it, it's more for, for professional schools, but for the baccalaureate degree, which is this meant to impact, it, it's not much of a problem. Even nationwide, the average debt uh, over the last two or three years has only been about $35,000. Uh, and th that's, that's a reasonable investment of a family in the future of, of their children. So I, I think the, uh, the investment that the president has proposed uh, is not in the areas that would be most impactful. If there are students of need uh, to access higher education, it would be better to augment the grant programs, such as Pell Grants, which is the federal program that, the, that really has been underfunded in recent years. Uh, it, it used to cover almost all of the cost of even uh, private universities. Now it doesn't even cover the, the, co the cost plus the deferred earning cost of going to a public university. That program is dedicated specifically on a needs basis. The president's proposal went forward free for all. Uh, his proposal is that all includes anyone under $200,000. That means that still people of means, you can earn as much as $200,000 a year and it's free. Uh, that, that's not the basis of egalitarian investment in higher education. So th I think the investment is misplaced. It's not the debt issue, it's the, the, the need for those of, of low economic status to have uh, targeted support. We have a program in Pell Grant that historically has been effective. The investment has not kept up with the true cost of education. Um, I agree with him. I think uh, raising the income as and assets uh, for Pell Grant eligibility would probably be a better route than uh, universal um, I guess you could call it even K through 14 education. Uh, I think the Pell Grant would, would be a really good way to reform it, but I also think they should reinvest in high school education when it connects to uh, higher education. I mean, why don't we require a year of our, uh, of our high school to be dual enrollment? That way you're a year ahead already. That would solve a little bit of the problem of overcrowding in our community colleges. Uh, that would be one thing, and that would also enhance our uh, high school education. It would give people the opportunity to decide on what they want to major in. We, we go so much into our, our educations, uh, not at USC maybe as much, but if you go at the community colleges, people are like, uh, well, I don't, I don't know what I want to major in. Well, my joke is always like, they always say undeclared, and I said, oh, I love that field. There's a lot of jobs in that field. Mm. Just, just jokingly, but obviously, like, we should try to solve those issues earlier. We should, you know, have, uh, connect people with their, with their uh, interests in high school and really try to, try to give them a pathway to be successful. So this question is directed to Dr. Scroggins. Um, in the past, you've commented on the skills gap that exists among California workers. Um, would President Obama's community college initiative help or harm this barrier, and why? Well, the skills gap refers to that uh, those exiting college, either community college, which is uh, direct job training, or even uh, baccalaureate programs, the exit skills don't match the skills that employers need. So um, I, I think that uh, providing a, a, a free avenue to access community colleges doesn't address the main issue of the skills gap. Uh, 
what we need are incentives for colleges to align their curriculum with uh, needs of employers and for employers to be part of the education system. So, uh, for example, uh, internships, apprenticeships, work experience really assists in uh, the employers and the colleges working together. Uh, I, I don't know if any of you have done that, but you really see the applications of what you're learning and the ability to have real world experiences uh, far outweighs in importance the fact of how much money you pay for college. Uh, America's not doing this, and, and the other nations are eating our lunch on this. The Germans are very good at this. The Chinese are very good at this, of uh, aligning higher education with the economic needs of the sectors in our community. Just we're, we, we, we do it, but it's tangential instead of head on. Just a nice segue to that. If any of you are considering a political internship, <laughs> please come by our office in BKC 263 and see Jody, who's there in the back. Uh, it's not too late. Um, we do prefer that students enroll in our in, in political internship course, but it is too late to register. She can still help place you for an internship in the spring or the summer if you're interested. Uh, so I'm going to ask one more question, but at this time we're almost to the midway point, and that's when we turn it over to questions from all of you. So if you could start formulating some questions that you might have for our panel. Um, I think I'd like to touch briefly on this, um, this program that's beginning to come into fruition here in California. Uh, starting with a, a pilot number of schools where um, community colleges are go going to begin issuing bachelor's degrees. Uh, I think it's starting with, I think we said 10 or 15 community, co 15 community colleges here in California. From an economic, emotional, family planning, socioeconomic, political standpoint, do you all think that that is a good idea or do you think that it's a bad idea for anyone? Uh, I think it's a good idea. Um, I think also, you know, like I was mentioning high school, why don't we give high school students the opportunity to uh, earn associates? Um, I think Obama's pushing this so much, it's universal uh, community colleges, so the workforce will be more skilled. Um, I think anytime you do that, you have higher skilled workers, you have higher wages. I think that's, that's a really big positive, and um, I think they should push for uh, bachelor, bachelor degrees in community colleges, but at the same time, I don't want to devalue the degrees that we get at the Cal States or the UCs. I don't know if there's, uh, I know when you go into a job interview, you know, I'll, some students just look at it, well, I have a bachelor's, but others like us around here, it's like, well, we got a, we got a bachelor's from USC. Um, will the community colleges kind of just blend in with the Cal States? That's one thing we have to worry about. Uh, I, maybe you could speak to that more um, on how the impact of that would really be, because I'm interested. So 21 states around the nation allow community colleges to offer bachelor's degrees. But they're not in philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> they're in uh, technical and applied fields. And those fields r really require more and more training to be able to, to be a computer technician or to be a medical lab technician or to be a registered nurse. Uh, two years isn't enough anymore. Secondly, California isn't producing enough bachelor's degrees. Uh, many studies, the Public Policy Institute of California notably, predicts uh, uh, by 2025, California will be short a million uh, bachelor's degrees, many of them in these technical areas. We just don't have the, the capacity to produce those degrees unless community colleges are part of the solution. Uh, the, this degree, uh, the upper division fees are $84 a unit, <coughs> uh, USC people, $84 a unit. <laughs> uh, but, but they're not meant to compete to USC. It's not going to demean the graduate uh, uh, programs here. And employers are, are looking to hire people who they had to train post-community uh, college training. If, if we graduate people in these fields, in nursing and so on, and then they go to work and the hospitals and the businesses have to pr provide additional technical training. That, that really is a, a problem for employers. 
So I, I think in this defined area that we're piloting this, there's a real advantage to providing additional training. It needs to be called, everybody says bachelor's degree, it needs to have a special name that sets it aside like a, a, a bat. Uh, uh, bachelor's in Applied in Technical Education or something like that, just to show that it, that, that it is a different degree. I was going to say that, um, some of the people who are against it, they, they say, oh my gosh, this is going to violate the uh, what's called the California's Master Plan on Higher Education. If you don't know what that is, this is a plan 50 years ago that many people attribute to the great success of higher ed in California and that there was a very distinct mission, uh, mis different missions among UC, Cal State, and the community colleges, and that they saw this as, you know, never mix this up, that, it, that, that you know, somehow if you do this, this will, the whole world is going to collapse. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, I mean, if, you know, 55 years later after the master plan, I mean, the state has changed so much. And then when you think about it, the, the gigantic size of California that, okay, we do have 10 Cal, you know, nine undergraduate UCs, 23 Cal States, and 106 community colleges. 112 now, 112, see? 112, 112. Okay, things have advanced. Thank you. And, and that so many people cannot get to a Cal State, even though, you know, there's 23 around the state, particularly people who are working and who, who have families or need to go to school at night. So just in terms of act, access and fairness, the fact that community colleges, in, even in these certain areas, will be allowed to offer these seems to be a fairer and, 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 you know, better way for a pathway because if anyone's ever tried to even get, I mean, sometimes I, um, at sometimes was, was working uh, part-time teaching at UCLA, your hated rival across town, and trying to get from downtown <laughs> LA to UCLA or even to get from downtown LA to Cal State LA, you know, to take a night class. I mean, it, it's crazy, and if, if you know, I had the option of going to many more community colleges, it just seems to be more equitable. Uh, I just, the, my only, I like the idea. My only concern is that um, that it kind of it, by saying you can offer like a bachelor's degree, it's like you um, do we really do does the job really require two extra years of training, or does it really, or does it like more like a or is it, um, you know, is it only one year? At, at my at my old school, the um, nursing degrees were only three years, were only three years, and then they got employed right away. And like, it, it, is that really is a four is four years truly necessary? And I the, I would just worry about keeping people out of the workforce um, if um, for an extra year if it's just sort of like we're just trying to fill it up just so that we have this this four-year arbitrary sort of thing, and that's the only thing that I kind of worry about um, with regards to these programs. All right, so now we're going to open um, the question portion of the discussion. Um, so we ask that you point your questions towards someone specific on the panel. Um, additionally, we ask that you state your name and your year and your major. Um, and we also ask that you disagree without being disagreeable, meaning please um, be respectful of um, the opposing side's position. Um, Nathaniel. Yeah, I, I've been at a lot of those meetings. Um, I mean, some part of it is right now is kind of like stagey theatricality, you know, that they're each kind of staking out this position and maybe they'll, you know, c come to uh, a, a, a mid-ground. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting because uh, the president of the University of California had never been a politician before. You know, there always had been people who'd come up the ranks of physics or law schools and real academics. And, you know, this is the first time John DePaltano was from, you know, governor of Arizona, the head of Homeland Security. So it's a whole, whole kind of interesting thing, sitting right next to Jerry Brown. They're almost, you know, mm -hmm. Paul against Paul, you know. And, uh, but, uh, but at the last meeting, they were sitting there chit-chatting with each other. So, you know, it's, it's not sort of blood hatred. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that that um, you know the people in the legislature kind of recognize that the, you know, what has happened basically, in the, at, at, particularly at UC, is 
the higher tuition is basically filling in for the cuts f that, that the state put into funding to University of California, and, and whether this is kind of a stagey theatrical uh, uh, maneuver by Napolitano that they're trying to, you know, say, okay, you know, if you don't want us to pass the pain on to the, the students, then you need to give us some more money. So, I, I mean, I think some compromise will probably be, st will probably be struck in that, and that, um, you know, at least the 5% will be reduced to maybe a 1% hike, or, you know, UC will have to do some kind of um, concession to Brown in, in, in some kind of policy way of say, you know, they'll study high salaries or they'll, they'll, they'll look at more online classes. There'll be some kind of, you know, token, you know, what do they say, negotiation, everybody has to go away like they got something. You know, that's, uh, so, and, and you know, two people as smart as Napolitano and Brown, you know, are, are not going to let that, you know, get in the way, I think. Anyone else like to ask a question for the panel? So I th we are going to close um, the Students Talk Back panel. Thank you guys so much for coming out today. We really appreciate it. Um, just to let you know that this is a bi-weekly um, colloquia and we meet every two weeks. So um, definitely come back to watch the panel. Okay, I, <clears throat> I would like to close in thanking all of our panelists, uh, particularly Dr. Bill Scroggins, who's come the farthest to be with us today. Uh, thank you very much for being here, Mr. Scroggins. So I'll give him a round of applause. Also, Mr. Larry Gordon, uh, it's interesting to always have a, a, a writer, someone who covers these issues in the media. So thank you very much for being here today. Uh, and also to our two students, uh, Samantha and Brian, thank you very much for being here. We know this is an issue of personal import and also your study, so thank you very much for being here. <laughs> And also to my co-moderator and our colleagues at the USC Daily Trojan for co-sponsoring the series today and also co-sponsoring the series throughout the semester. Thank you, Sarah. A few, yes, thank you, Sarah. Uh, a few closing remarks. Next Wednesday, we'll be hosting another Students Talk Back discussion about the 2016 presidential race. This discussion will take place here uh, from 12 to 1 o'clock in the forum. Next Wednesday, we will also be hosting another roundtable discussion series with our visiting fellows, uh, former State Senator Mark Wyland and former Assemblyman Anthony Portentino. As always, those discussions take place from 7 to 8 o'clock in uh, Mud Hall of Philosophy, room 102. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're still looking for a political internship, uh, they are still available through our office. The Institute offers uh, internship opportunities with elected officials, political consultants, nonprofits, non-governmental organizations, and much more. So if you are interested, please see Jody Epstein in our office in VKC 263 or visit our website. So thank you very much. I have a, yeah. I just, this is one small favor. If I'm gonna leave a piece of paper here. Often uh, when we uh, go around to different campuses, we always like to try to see if any students would like to give us a name and uh, email. Just for, We do stories and interviews on many different topics during the course of the year, and sometimes it's just great to have people you know that, you know, if something's going on that we can call a student at, at you know, UC Irvine, USC and, and, you know, mix it up around the state. So, and I, I don't have anything totally specific in mind, but just to be, you know, just to have people who might be friendly and, be, you know, be willing to talk and be reachable. If anybody wants to volunteer, I'd appreciate that. I'll just leave it. Okay. Once again, it is voluntary. It's not necessary yeah. that you provide that information. All right. Thanks very much.